superposition. Well, before we talk about, so you can only apply this method actually, superposition, if your circuit is a linear circuit. What does that mean, linear circuit? It has linear elements. If you look at the relationship for voltage versus current, if you look at the voltage versus current for a resistor, it is linear. The graph looks like this, linear graph. So all resistors are linear elements. Since they are, so the principle of superposition can be applied here. What does that mean, superposition? Let's take a circuit, and for example, let's say we have, well, let me pick an example. We have this problem here. I'm not a fan of this method, because you'll see in a minute, you gotta do this for this problem twice. But the example we're gonna give you is gonna be like, Superposition will be perfect for it. And this is two amps. Since notice all the elements here are linear, I can apply the principle of superposition, which says you can find, let's say I'm looking for this current here, I sub x. If you want to find I sub X, we'll call this source one. We'll call this source two. Find I sub X due to source one. Add to it I sub X due to source two. So first one is we take source one, we leave it there, which is three volts. And now we're gonna kill source two. How do you kill a current source? You kill a current source by making it an open circuit. So this is I of X1. Well, I can combine, because there's nothing going that way. I sub X1, it's going to be three divided by the sum of these, because so, you can combine these two into one resistor, which is 15. That's 1 over 5, which is 0.2 amp. Now, I sub X2 is the current due to source 2, which means we have to kill the voltage source. And to kill a voltage source, you make it what? A short circuit. Notice the voltage source is gone. And this is I sub X of two, due to source two. I can use current division. It's gonna be the source, which is two, times that resistor over the sum of both of them, six and nine, which is 15. Two times six, which is what? 12 over 15. If I divide it by three, that's what? Four over five, which is 0.8. So what is I sub X then? It's the sum of both currents. The current due to source one, the current due to source two, that's 0.2 amps plus 0.8 amp, which is what? 1.0 amp. When you have three sources, you gotta do the problem three times. So as I said, I'm not a huge fan of this method, but doesn't mean it can't be done. You can't kill a dependent source, or you can't look at a response of a dependent source if you only have dependent source in the circuit. So you always gotta kill the independent sources. Again, to kill a current source, you make it an open circuit. To kill a voltage source, you make it a short circuit. And you find whatever you're looking for. If it's current voltage due to source one, due to source two, due to source three, and you add them. Let me try another one. Another example. We have 10 volts here. 
we have 2 ohm 3 amp one and we have a dependent source here and that dependent source is plus to minus voltage source here and the value equal two times i sub x and i sub x is this current so this is why i call this source one i'm going to call this source two And let's assume the question was, what's the voltage right here? So I'm going to write V as the voltage due to source 1 plus the voltage due to source 2. Let's look at V1 the voltage due to source number one. Source number one is the voltage source, so I'll leave it in the circuit. That's 10. That's two. Kill this one, that's an open circuit, that's a current source. This is I sub X. This is 2 plus to minus 2 times I sub X. And this is the voltage V1. Notice the dependent source is still there. And you can use any method to solve this. Maybe I'll do KVL here. If I do KVL, that's what? minus 10 plus 2 times I sub X. I sub X is going that way. There's nothing's going to go down this way. It's an open circuit. Plus 2 times I sub X plus 2 times I sub X is equal to 0. 6 I sub X equals what? 10 I sub X equals 10 over 6, which is what? 5 over 3? What were you doing for that? You were doing... KVL. Oh, why did the uh, 1 ohm turn into 2 ohm? Oh, that was a 1. Yes. That makes the math actually easier. Why? Because it's 8 o'clock. That'll make it a 5. Now you tell me. That's 2 amp. I can find V1 now. Notice if I do KVL right there, if you put a meter, if you attach a meter right here, there's my meter. I use M for a meter. You have a closed circuit right there. I can do KVL. Negative 10 plus 2 times I sub X plus V1 is equal to 0. So V1 is equal to what? 10 minus 2 times I sub X. Well, I sub X is 2 here. 10 minus 4. So V1 equals what? 6 volts. That's just due to source number one. I'm going to repeat the whole process now for source number two. You'll see it's not really like by looking at one source at a time, it's not making the problem much easier, especially when I kill that source. Because I know the voltage here. I have one, two, two nodes. I could have did two equations by two unknowns. Or I could have done, notice there's one mesh here, one loop. There's another equation right here. If I assign current, I have two equations by two unknowns. It's not going to be much difficult to solve. 
but now I just did it this way just to get V1. I gotta resolve the problem to get what V2. Let's look at source two now. So kill the first source, V1, or source one, two here. This is a current source, 3 amp, 1, 2 I sub X, and I sub X is this current. And this is V2 now. And you gotta solve that circuit again. And you can use any of the te techniques we learned before. So really looking at it one source at a time didn't make it much easier. So if I define this current, this is really I sub X. That's the current going through the top piece. We'll call this I sub Y. I need three equations by, th I mean two equations by two unknowns. So if I do the outside loop here, two times I sub X plus one times I sub Y plus two I sub X equals to zero. I took the outside loop. I'll highlight that loop in pink. I went that direction. I did KVL that way. That's one equation. If you clean it, what do you have? 3i sub x plus i sub y equals zero. Or if you want to use substitution, you can say i sub y equals what? Negative 3i sub x. Is it 4i sub x? Two and two, four. Yowza. I need a second equation. That's that source right here. Super mesh says what? It says the three amp is the current going up should equal what? What is the current up in terms of I sub Y and I sub X? I sub Y minus I sub X? Yes, I sub Y minus I sub X. That's my second equation. I don't need a calculator to solve that because I know I sub Y is what? Negative four I sub X minus I sub X. 3 equals what? Negative 5 I sub X. I sub X is negative what? 0.6 is it? Again, if I do KVL right here in this loop or that loop, doesn't really matter. If I do this loop here, it says two times I sub X plus V2 is equal to zero. That's V2, that's how we define it. Two times negative, that's negative 1.2 plus V2 is equal to zero. What is V2 equal to? 1.2. Can we figure now what V equal to? V equals V1 plus V2, which is, what was V1 I forgot? Six volts plus 1.2, which is what? 7.2 volts. If you get three sources, you gotta do the problem three times. Four sources, four times. Wait, how, with that last equation, how'd you get that? This one? No, right about that. Two, two I sub X plus B2 equals zero. I mean, you're doing KVL, but right there. just for that. Two times I sub X, yeah. plus, that's plus to minus. Oh. 
plus to minus V2 equals zero. Now notice I could have done the problem without using superposition and the math probably will be the same as the math on this page, just this page. Let's look at the circuit. I keep whining about this method saying, I don't like it, I don't like it. But I want to show you why, because the math itself, only in few cases the math is much easier. What was the value that I forgot? 10 volts. Is that 10? Yeah. So if I did mesh analysis there, just to show you, mesh analysis, here's a current. We'll call it, uh, this was I sub X called here. So that's I sub X. And we'll call this I sub Y or I sub two, whatever you want to call it, doesn't really matter. There's two unknowns right there. When I did, when I was looking at the second source, I had two equations by two unknowns. So I'm going to try to eliminate the first page. Instead of looking at this source, finding the answer to it, then redo the circuit for this source and spend two equations by two unknowns and add them, I could have done this problem using either KVL or KCL, no load mesh analysis. Here's one loop on the outside, negative 10 plus 2 times I sub X plus 1 times I sub 2 plus 2 times I sub X is equal to 0 outside. 4 I sub X plus I sub 2 is equal to 10. Now the other equation is that source, current source, the three amps, is the current up, it's I sub two minus I sub X. There's my three equations by three unknowns. Again, if you don't want to use calculus to solve them, that's fine. I can rewrite that as negative I sub X or positive I sub X if I move everything to this side, minus I sub 2 equals negative 3. I shuffle sides or multiply by negative 1. The reason I did that, I can use the elimination method. These two will cancel each other out. And what do you have? 5 I sub X is equal what? 10 minus 3, which is 7. I sub X equals 7 over 5, which is 1.4. This is my V. The book defined V for me right there. They want to know what V is. So do KVL right here. Minus 10 plus 2 times I sub X plus V is equal to 0. Or V equals 10 minus 2 times I sub X. 10 minus 2 times 1.4. Isn't that 2.8? Is that 7.2? Same answer. So instead of looking at the circuit from this source point of view, or from that one, combine them together. If you have three, you got to do it three times. That's why I said I'm not a fan of this method. In some cases, everything falls off. It works really beautiful, but it's not that often. Maybe once in a while. So that's actually superposition. I'll just move forward from it. And the next, I'll, maybe I'll stop the video and do the next video separate.